Hey guys, it's Sharika. Welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe before you leave. I would love to have you. So today we are doing another King Crab mukbang for today's drink. Girl, don't worry about what's in my cup. Okay. <laughs> I got my bowl right here. It has a napkin in it already, but that's my business. Okay. So let's say grace and begin. Shout out to my plug with these king crab. Look at these. They're huge. They're not as big as the last ones, but they're big. This thing has so much meat in it. So yeah. We do have a story time today. Now, I got this story time from YouTube. The story time on YouTube, this episode was probably like four years old. But I've never told this story before. So don't come in my comments talking about, I heard this story before. Girl, no, you did. Okay, stop. <laughs> All right, so there was this lady. We're going to call her Karen. Okay, y'all following? Okay. This lady named Karen. Karen was from Ohio. She lived in Ohio on a farm with her parents. She was like an abused child and she could not wait to leave Ohio. So once she graduated from high school, she met this guy. They started dating. And he also had dreams to get away from Ohio. So... Several years down the line, they dating, things are getting serious, they get married, and they end up moving to Miami. So she's working at Dr. Miami's office. Okay. My friend, I don't know if she's working at Dr. Miami's office, but that's what I'm going to tell y'all. But she was working at a plastic surgeon's office, okay? So once she got her BB yet, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay, so they're married and in the beginning things were good, but now she's living this Miami lifestyle and the Ohio dude is just a little too boring for her. So after a year of being married, they called it quiz. Okay. I'll put this right here so y'all can have something to look at. They call it quits after a year. A few years later, you know, she, she stayed on the dating scene because she lived in Miami, right? But a few years later, she ran into this other guy that she met, fell in love, same thing, they got married. Now this time, I think the marriage last, I think the marriage maybe lasted for like eight years. Like it lasted for a long time. Because by this time, she's a little older when she leaves this husband. So, now let me just tell y'all. In this episode, they did old girl dirty because she went from looking, I mean, I know that's the way that it worked, but... If you, you know what I'm saying? If you're a jazzy young thing, you're a jazzy young thing. That don't mean because when you hit your 40s, you got a little toe up from the flow up. You know what I'm trying to say? So, they did her dirty. That's all I'm going to say. I, I'm going to pop in a little clip. This is how she looked in the beginning of the story. And this is how she looked at the end. They ain't have to do old girl like that. Okay. Not in these Miami streets. She still look like she lived in Ohio. But that ain't my baby. So, girl. She tired of this fool, too. Jimmy wasn't doing it for her. Okay? She tired of him. She needs something else. Well, they was chilling on the strip in Miami. She bumps into 
this older wealthy guy. Oh. So girl, she done met this older dude. The next week, they started dating, started getting a little serious. Time goes by, not that much time, man, because baby girl keeps her man. A little time went by, they got married. So she didn't have to work anymore at this point once she scored this husband. Because again, he was wealthy and she just, you know, just hung around the house. But y'all know, Karen, she gets real bored real quick. And she knows she can't just up and leave this marriage because, you know, she's not working. She feels like she's older and she just got to stay put. So Karen picks up this shopping habit. This lady had 52 credit cards. So once her husband started getting the bills and stuff, he like, hey, hey, little mama, you need to slow down, okay? If this is not pretty woman. You are not Julia Roberts and I am not Richard Gere, okay? You, <laughs> you need to chill, okay, with these credit cards and all this shopping. So he ended up putting her on a $100 budget. Which I thought that was a little, that's a little steep. Now, come on now, $100 budget, please. So, she can't do nothing now but go back and forth to the Piggly Wiggly and get, you know, some cute little groceries or something like that. So, one day when she was at the store, the Piggly Wiggly, she runs into Tyrone. You heard me right. Getting the buggies out of the parking lot, Tyrone. Yes. Tyrone is 28 years younger than Karen. So, he flirting with her, she flirting with him. They got a whole little thing going on. She always got to go to the Piggly Wiggly. She done forgot some milk. She done forgot. Every time she turned around, her husband turned around, she done forgot something. She need to run to the Piggly Wiggly. So, girl, by this time, you know, that's her little grocery store booth thing. Her girl, this time, he was like, okay. He see, you know, she rolling up in her nice car. And she feeling them a little bit because she flirting back. Right? Tyrone can pick up on it and his spidey senses go up when he know when he think he, he got a little come up, okay? So girl. Big Tyrone them talked her into going on the side of the building of the Piggly Wiggly. He kissing on her neck, whispering sweet nothings in her ear. They sweating, breathing hard, the whole little thing. Y'all know how it be, the dramatics, okay? And Karen like, I ain't never had nothing like that happen to me. I'm trying to see what that be about, right? So she gets a room. Baby, when I tell you Tyrone, then laid it down up in there, okay? Daddy long legs, okay? Had to be, because baby, she was ready to risk it all. That thing was hanging and swinging, okay? That's her word. <laughs> Not mine. So, girl. Now, that's her side piece. So, they always at the hotel. Doing what they got to do. Her husband worked late nights. So, he, he never noticed, you know, when he come home, she walking funny and stuff like that because... <laughs> work late night okay so he never noticed anything so one day Tyrone getting off work headed to the motel she had done set the whole thing up she got the rose petals on the bed everything well Tyrone never shows up because he gets pulled over by the police 
for driving. Um, he gets pulled over by the police and get arrested for driving with suspended license. And he had some other stuff going on too on his record. Of course, that's why his name is Tyrone. Okay, so now Tyrone got to do time in the penitentiary. Oh, but baby, Karen is his ride or die, okay? She in the car listening to the sex and red, everything. Man, I love you. You bad. <laughs> Girl, he had to turn Miss Karen out. Look at that. Some of it's still in the shell. Girl, to turn Miss Karen out, okay? So the whole, she don't want to got a P.O. box. So he can send her letters. They send each other letters. She his, she his pen pal for a whole year. So he telling her, you know, we need to be together. And she down for it because, you know, Tyrone laid it on thick. And she ain't had that in a while. She ain't never had no mandingo before. So she is just like head over heels. Okay. Anything he tell her, she gonna do it. So she like, okay, yeah, we're gonna be together. They plan on being together. But he was like, well, I'll take care of your husband. So at first she laughed it off, whatever like that. But no, he was dead serious. He's like, I'll take care of your husband. But of course they got to speak in code and stuff like that when they're on the phone and when they when he writing the letters to it. He can't just outright say, I'm going to pull this fool cap back. He got to be like, you know, he got to speak in code. So what Karen do? Karen get everything set up. They already plotting and scheming. So, he do his time, cause he did the crime, so he got to do his time. So, they already got the plan together. But before they do it, she gotta get one piece of his sweet love, okay? Before they do it. She always go all out with the hotel room. She provided him with the mask. And the cowboy gun. The peacemaker. So the plan was. What are we going to call the husband? When Dan comes home. Which is going to be late at night. Tyrone's going to be waiting for him in the kitchen. The night came. It was time to do what needed to be done. Tyrone waiting in the kitchen. Mr. Dan come home after a long, hard day of work. And see this dude in his kitchen pointing the peacemaker at him. So, of course, they're struggling. Cause Mr. Dan ain't gonna go out like no sucker, but this is a dude from the penitentiary that we talking about, and he's 28 years younger, muscle bound. They want your love and your money. So, of course, Mr. Dan lost that fight, and Tyrone walked out. So the job was done. Now it's time for Karen to do her part. He get to the hotel. Before she can do what she need to do, she needs some, some more motivation. <laughs> okay? She need that motivation. They do what they had to do. He done slung around the room a few times. Neighbors know his name by now, all the things. Girl, she done went to the house, found Mr. Dan, and she got to play her role. Call the popo. They come. You know, she playing the role. She screaming, hollering, crying. 
she can't believe it. She can't drive because she just, she's too emotional. The cops tell her, have somebody come pick you up and we'll begin the investigation. So, the investigation was over pretty quickly because Karen had this drawer where she was storing all the letters that they were writing each other back and forth. So it was almost like she wanted Dan to find out that she was cheating on him. Because she just left it in plain sight. But in the letters, of course, they did talk about the plan. But see, they were getting a little... They were just using like... They wasn't just outright saying, oh yeah, I'm going to do this. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do this fool. Like, he had to play around with his words a little bit so they needed some more evidence but she was the prime suspect so in one so they going through the letters and in one of the letters she mentions that her husband had just took out a five hundred thousand dollar insurance policy and that's what they were going to use to start their life off So that was the motive. Also, after Tyrone did what he did, he stole Mr. Dan's car. Now, that wasn't a part of the plan. He called an Uber over there. He should have called an Uber back. He done stole Mr. Dan's car. They find the car, and they got his handprints all over it. So, of course, a few days later, it didn't take any time. So I would say maybe like a week or two, they arrested Karen and Tyrone. And they both got the death penalty. Girl, ain't that something? I will all in that story. I'm going to have it linked in the description box. Me. Girl, I'm squeezing the life out of that lemon, ain't it? Mm. Okay, guys, so I hope you're done eating. If you're eating with me, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Eating Pretty Mutt Bombs, and I'll see you guys on the next one.